Hi, this is Brian Haley with CAD1, a value-added reseller and award-winning training center out of Denver, Colorado. And today I'm going to go through part two of creating a shape file, taking a shape file and making it into a surface. Uh, I've already gone through part one, and it's a much simpler method, but it doesn't quite give you as good results, and I'll post a link to that. So let's just go ahead and get into this. So here's the results of what I did earlier in part one. As you can see, it created a surface. The surface is good for a lot of cases, but you can see it it it, it doesn't do a whole real good job here. And you know, it's missing some data points, and uh, maybe it's not quite good enough for you. So I'm going to show you another method. Now, the way I'm going to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the contours into a blank drawing just as AutoCAD entities. And the way we do that is we use the map import command. So I'm going to bring those in, grab the shape file. The important thing here is I want to include data. So I'll click there where it says data, and then I'll click on the ellipsis, and I want to tell it to create the object data. Now, honestly, the only one I'm interested for this is the contour ELE, All right, this field right here. I could toggle the rest of them off if I wanted to, but uh, my philosophy is it's better to have the data and not need it than need the data and not have it. So I'll go ahead and turn that on, select OK, and OK. It's going to process those, bring them into my drawing. After a quick zoom extents, I'll be able to see everything. Uh, zoom extents, and there they are. Now these are just polylines, so if I select one, it's simply a poly polyline. If I go into my AutoCAD properties, what you'll notice is the elevation of this polyline is set to zero. That doesn't work very well for us. However, I do have the elevation of it in this field that was coming from the shape file. So what I want to do is I want to assign each polyline's elevation from its contour elevation field. Now I can't do that in this drawing, so I'm going to go ahead and close this drawing and I'm going to save it. Yes, I want to save it. I'll call this one base contours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new drawing and I'm going to query these contours into that new drawing. And as I do that, I'm going to alter the elevations of them. So here I am in this new drawing. Now to do a query, you have to use the map tool. So I'm going to turn on my map workspace. So map W space. I'll go ahead and turn that on. Now most of the time when this comes up, the display manager will be the current tab. I'm going to switch that to the map explorer. And I want to attach that base contour drawing to this one. So I'll right click on drawings and choose attach. Now I can't find my drawing because it's on a different network drive. So what I need to do is I need to create a drive alias, which is this button right over here. So I'll go ahead and browse to my location, which it happens to default to. I'll give it a name, so this will be Barry County. Now, no spaces, so that's why I put the underscore in there. And then you add it. Don't forget to add it. And now on my pull down, there's my Barry County. I'm going to go ahead and add in my base contours here. Select OK. And that drawing is now attached. Now, I can't attach the drawing if it's open. That's why I had to close it. And now what I want to do is I want to create a query. So I'll right click on current query. I'll define the query. Now, a couple of things I need to do here. First, I need to tell what part of that other drawing I want to query from. And in this case, I want to do the entire thing. So I'll click on location, leave my boundary type set to all, and select OK. And now I've started my query. You have to tell it where you want to go. Now, if I knew the area ahead of time, I could pick just that area to bring that stuff in. But I'm going to bring everything in. The other thing I want to do is I want to alter the properties. I want to change the elevation of the objects to match the elevation from that object data. So I'll toggle on elevation as the property I want to change. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create an expression. The expression in this case is extremely simple. I simply wanted to use this contour ELE prop uh, field from the shape file. Don't forget to add here. If you don't add, it doesn't work. I've done that several times. Select OK. Now, I'm not quite ready to execute the query yet. Right now, if I were to execute the query, it would just show me the results. I don't want to just see the results. I actually want to be able to use it. So I'm going to change my query mode to draw. Go ahead and execute that query. Give this a moment, quick zoom extents, 
and there they are. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and select one of those polylines. I'll go into my properties, and as you can see now, it definitely does have that elevation, 1340 here. And as you can see, that matches the contour elevation fields from the shape file. And now I simply create my surface. Now I know the area that I'm interested in, so let me go ahead and insert my uh, area of interest here. And I'm going to create a surface. Now, a couple of things I want to point out real quick about this surface. All right. First of all, we'll just give it a quick name, GIS, contours, or whatever you want. And I'm going to use the same style that I used before. So that 5 foot and 25 foot design, just to be a little bit consistent here. Because I've got a ton of data here, I want to add the boundary in first. So I'm going to right click on boundaries, choose add, and I'm going to do this as a data clip boundary. And basically this just prevents any data outside of the boundary from being added into the surface. And I always change my midordinate distance to at least the at the most 0.1. Um, in this case, it really doesn't matter because this is a rectangle, but it's a good habit to get into. So I'll go ahead and select that boundary. And now I will add in the contours. Right click on contours, choose add. Again, there's that nasty minordinate distance, change it to 0.1. And what I recommend is toggle on all four of these minimize flat areas by options, including the swapping edges. I don't care what any book you've ever read says. I don't care what the best practices guide that ships with the program says. You want to toggle all four of these on. Trust me on this. You'll get a much better surface. I'll select OK there. It's going to ask me which objects do I want to add. I'm going to go ahead and add all of them. And then I will deselect my boundary there because I don't want that to be a part of it. Make sure I deselected it. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Helps if you hold down the right button. And I'm going to do this in real time. I'm not going to pause the video. And you can see how quick this goes. Massive amounts of data in a fairly short time because I've got that data clip boundary there. And what I want you to see is these contours in this area here give a much better representation of what I'd imagine the surface would look like. If I switch back over to the surface from the shape file, you can see this whole area right here is extremely flat. It's not flat, but it's very close to being flat. If I switch back over here to the one that I created this time, this area right here looks much better like than what I would expect it to. Now, it's not perfect. I've still got some flat areas in here, but it's nothing like what I got from uh, the GIS data. So this is the way I would recommend if you need to make sure you maintain that um, density of the data and you want to get a, a much better representation of your surface. Love to hear what you guys think. Post comments, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.